It is estimated that two out of every three Americans have played Tetris. Tetris is a game of skill. Seven blocks of different shapes descend from the top of the screen. The player must arrange them to form and clear horizontal lines. Success is measured by the number of lines cleared and the total number of points scored. As the player clears more lines, the pieces fall faster. The faster the pieces fall, the more points are scored. When the pieces reach the top of the screen, the game is over. Russian computer scientist Alexei Pazhitnov invented Tetris in 1984 on an Electronica 60. In the years that followed, the game exploded in popularity and was ported to virtually every computer and console on the market. In 1989, Nintendo released Tetris for the Game Boy and the Nintendo Entertainment System, selling nearly 40 million copies and bringing the game to the masses. In 1990, Nintendo chose Tetris as the central game in the largest video game tournament the world had ever seen, the Nintendo World Championships. A 14-year-old boy from Texas named Thor won. Nintendo's Tetris came to be viewed as the definitive version of the game. Its secrets and mysteries fascinating the best players in the decades to come. Every successful game ends with the same message to the player. This is the story of the people who truly mastered the game. done nothing but play Tetris for many, many years, and now I'm here because I heard about a Tetris competition, and I'm here hopefully to win it. I mean, I began Tetris really when I was a kid. I used to take statistics of every single game I played and write down whether I had a cup of coffee beforehand or something like that to kind of see what would make me play Tetris the best. And I found out that actually exactly one half hour before you have, after you have some coffee, you play the best. Top A. We're moving to the Super Nintendo version. We actually play against each other, and every time you get a Tetris, it sends garbage to the other person. Ooh, the most painful misdrop in Ashley's life. Let's see if she can survive. Oh, I'm sorry. Tetris is not fair, folks. I've got to get it together. I'm still in viable just on picking hair is right. Ben was just informed that in the final match, the players won't be allowed to rotate the pieces. This is considered a very unusual style of play. Ben wins with a score of 2,586 points. This is what 15 years of playing one game and one game only will get you in a tournament somewhere and a documentary thereafter. It's all about Tetris. Goes a lot faster than that if you're really good. We have a new low, 53 points. She came in and asked for a glass of blood. Um, clears a little space, gets ready for her long bar. Make sure to just look at this comeback. Oh, Mullen takes it by a landslide. Your champion, Mullen Nylander. And that's it, everybody please go home.
So this one is three. Yeah. You got three more for five. Yeah. If I bought all three of them, would you go to four for each? Sure. You're a good Tetris fan? Yeah, we are finding the best Tetris player in the world. We always had wondered why the biggest game in the world, or it's probably the, the most played game ever, didn't have a champion. And the games like Pac-Man had Billy Mitchell, and Asteroids now has John McAllister, and Tetris has possibly even played more than that. And I decided to find the best Tetris players in the world and play them in a contest. It's the only video game that can be described as perfect, right? Because how would you improve it? Add a shape, take away a shape? The shapes in, in the games are called tetraminos. Uh, and it comes from Greece. Tetra means four in Greece. Four. The board game which kind of was the inspiration of my game was the was the puzzle called Pentamino. You know that uh, chess is uh, or used to be Olympic sport. So it's okay for mental uh, activity to be a matter of sportive competition. I believe that Tetris may well be the first virtual sport. If I was going to practice uh, to be the smartest or the fastest thinker in the world, would I play football? I don't think so. I would play Tetris. For months I've been searching for these uh, CRT televisions. They're kind of hard to find, but uh, we're here at this thrift store and we found the mother load. There's about 10 in there. Despite being based in Portland, Oregon, Robin decides to hold his tournament in Los Angeles in an effort to draw more people. He hopes that if he can get the best players involved and crown a champion, he will have done his part to legitimize Tetris as a professional sport. Well, I'm pretty happy with this. No more internet scoreboards, no more second chances, just a good old-fashioned face-to-face tournament for the ages. It's the Tetris Showdown of the Century. We're joined live by Robin Mahara. So uh, the World Championships, what kind of competition are we talking about? Uh, we're talking about the classic NES Tetris. Uh, Tetris is probably the most played video game of all time. It's, a, it's an addicting game, and uh, it's stolen millions of hours from millions of people. The champion has never been crowned, and I made it my goal to seek out and find a world champion. Are you a big fan? Because I know when I play, I like to stack them up all on one side, and then you get one of those long four ones, because it's such a good payoff when you get the four. And then four lines. Yeah, I do enjoy that maneuver. The, the long bar to get the Tetris is pretty solid. Tetris is a game of decisions, each one affecting the next at speeds of up to two decisions per second. The Tetris Master strives to make the right decision every single time, up to 700 times per game. To do this, the Tetris Master must maintain focus. The four line clear called at Tetris scores the most points. The Master relentlessly pursues Tetrises. This is done by building a wall and leaving a well. The long bar completes the Tetris. The probability of getting a long bar at any given moment is about one out of seven. The long bar is the most important piece in the game. An extended period without it is known as a drought. A long bar drought is the most dreaded occurrence in NES Tetris. Robin is about to experience a drought. To survive the drought, Robin is forced to start burning lines off the top of his wall. That was a drought. A long bar drought of 40 pieces is deadly to the average player. I think I've narrowed down what I consider to be the top Tetris players in the world. Uh, <clears throat> this is where they live, and I've decided that I'm going to hold a massive contest, invite them all, and come out of there knowing who the best Tetris player in the world is. Once I found Twin Galaxies, they keep the world records for all video games. It dawned on me that not only 
had several people been playing this game ever since it came out 22 years ago. Uh, but a lot of people have been taking it very, very seriously. Quite a few years ago, it all started with just a mysterious tape popping up. Hmm. Oh, a couple hundred thousand on Tetris. Well, this should definitely be interesting. And I had no idea it was going to snowball so exponentially as it has. Dana Wilcox, uh, kind of out of nowhere, just posted this score a month ago. Uh, I don't know very much about her, but she's from the Oakland area. I mean, I had no idea that that was even, that Twin Galaxies even existed until my friend was all, dude, check out King of Kong. And I saw King of Kong and I was like, you know, it's on. Like, whoa, that, that exists. And then I started checking out Tetris on there and it, all the scores were crap. When I was a kid, my mom got pretty good. We had this like, dry erase whiteboard and it would say what chore you had to do that week and in the top corner it would always say the reigning highest tetris score which my mom held for two months and then i i wiped her off the board and that was it do you remember what that score was uh, i think it was like 151 ish the next one i remember was uh like a 624. i took a polaroid of the tv like 624 check it out bitches you know I couldn't leave the screen on for that long. <laughs> freeze, it's like an Etch-a-Sketch that you freeze in time, like no one ever touches the TV again. Which maybe I would do if I got, if I maxed it out. Uh, Jesse Kelker at one point held the world record for lines. I wanna say he's somewhere between three and a half and four feet long, so he's almost doubled in size since we got him. No? Well, let's see, my mom would have been the one to bring the game into the house. She brought it home one night and the whole family sat down and started playing. And she had a natural knack for it and I turned out to have a natural knack for it. And so it would turn into competitions between me and my mom a lot. And I was would do my schoolwork because she wouldn't let me on the Nintendo before my school. And yes, she would check it because she was not giving up that Nintendo for anything. My husband, you know, goes on to Google and he finds Twin Galaxies website. This is like a serious website and they track this stuff and they've been doing it since the 80s. And so I sat and I played and I got to level 29 for the first time I saw level 29 and I went, whoa. And I finally got to 291 and I was like, okay, you know, there's enough Tetris. I'll, I'll stick with 291. Let's see how it goes. And I got the certificate where I have, you know, I am a world record holder and whatnot. And then I think Ben came in about three months later and just went, no, I'm not having this 291. I'm going to go with 294. And I went, oh. Uh, ben Mullen oh. is the world record holder for the most number of lines at 296, which means, uh, incredibly, he was able to score six lines into what everyone considers the death screen. Lines in Tetris have a real elegance to them. If you get really good at getting a lot of lines every time, in high school, I was to the point where I could average over 270 lines per game. Which, when you average in some bad games, I'm getting to level 29 nearly every time. So it's just a quick game I played um, to show that I'm still capable of getting to level 29. And I may or may not get there because I can't remember if the piece I just dropped gets me there or not. Wish it luck. Oh yeah, it does. Okay, that's level 29. That was really quick. <laughs> But level 29 does tend to kill you, so I'm dead. In high school, I got an 820,000. And that's a pretty good score, even today. So I started watching, and, and people like Harry Hong and whatnot would come along. And they were scoring, but they were scoring way beneath what I had done. So I got an arrogant attitude, like, I'm number one, no one can touch me. Harry Hong's nothing. Everybody's nothing. That's the attitude I had. So I wasn't trying to make myself better. And Harry Hong was. I made it a goal to get the max. Like, I had to. I would say four years was, it was a pretty long time. I just believed, I just made myself believe that I was capable of doing it. For the past couple of years, there's been a leapfrogging situation where everyone was trying to be the first person to ever max out the game. There are two paramount achievements within NES Tetris, largely dismissed as unattainable. The first is the max out, or perfect score of 999,999 points. With only a six-digit score counter, this is the highest possible score. 
The master strives to score the max before reaching the level 29 kill screen, a level so fast that it is believed impossible to survive. To reach the max before hitting the kill screen, the master must play perfectly, scoring Tetris at least 60% of the time. But I didn't really reflect on the fact that there's only so many lines to work with. So I had to fit more and more perfection into that same space. No one ever thought that there would be a max out. That's pushing the realms of feasibility. And lo and behold, a little while later, suddenly Harry pulls out some more magic from his hat and poof. But that night when I got the max, I checked my score. I just glanced at it real quick. It was around, I believe, 900, like in the high 960 thousands. And I knew I had to get a Tetris stake within the next like five lines. The pieces didn't come out. To, I, I had to really think quickly on where to put the pieces at that time. I made like two second, like last, like maybe like last millisecond decision. So I had to like maneuver like really quickly. I, I just dropped the controller because you know, I was done. You know, I, was, I dropped the controller and then I just yelled. <laughs> I just yelled, it was like 1.30 in the morning. I saved a bottle of Johnny Walker just for you know, that occasion. And I've had that bottle for two years. Yeah, that night we all took a shot of that and you know, it was a good night, yeah. That made me like, all right, that's it. I'm maxing it out. <laughs> Harry Hong is my hero. Because before that, honestly, I had started kind of like in my own solitary Tetris world, wondering if it was possible. Harry did it first. Uh, Jonas actually claimed that he had done it before Harry, but he didn't have the appropriate video. I gotta show you the technique that has really kind of put me over the edge, and it is like the eyes. I got, I got like the eyes, I could split it out and check the next button, right? So sometimes you need an advantage. The first time I maxed it out, I just, yeah, it's a really weird thing. You, you have this goal, and you max it out, it's 1 a.m., you have no camera, you have no way to put this on film. So on my birthday last, last year in 2009, April 19th, I saw that Harry had, you know, given me the birthday present of usurping me first to, to the title. And so, you know, I, I didn't want to see that on my birthday. That, that kind of motivated me. I was like, I, I need to do this. The first video was uh, a level 18 max out with no sound. And the initial reaction was because there was no sound, it seemed like I had something to hide. Yeah, the second one was the level 19 max out with my AT&T tilt phone. Right off the bat, people kind of dismissed it because they couldn't see what was going on. People comment on my video saying it's fake. It's a glitch, he's cheating. But I mean, I mean, in a way, you know, I take that as a compliment, you know, like, I mean, if they think it's really that impossible to play like that, then, you know, that, that's good for me. Dude, the best on that yeah. YouTube was reading all the comments of people that said, like, this is a fake video, this is slowed down. Oh, you know, look at, yeah. you know, one minute and 25 seconds in, the camera glitches. <laughs> it's, it's clearly computer generated. Yeah. But that, that's the whole folklore thing. That's the kind of Bigfoot photo type of situation that I was, that I was trying to develop, actually. The second paramount achievement within the game is passing the level 29 kill screen and reaching level 30. This is widely believed to be impossible because the pieces begin falling too quickly to reach the sides. Ben Mullen has come the closest, his record of 296 lines falling just four lines short of level 30. Getting that record, it's really helpful if you're good at getting to level 29 a lot of times. So I just got there over and over, built up as high as I could, got Tetrises and whatever I could do, and eventually I got six lines on there. That's nuts in and of itself. You gotta really build up pretty darn high to do that. To get really far past that, you're gonna have to get pieces to the edge on 29, which is, to me, just crazy. There is a significant jump between level 28 and 29. It boggled me, you know? I absolutely had to find out who has seen level 30. Does level 30 exist? Does it just keep going on forever? There are two known strategies to reach level 30. The first is to prepare a center well at the end of level 28 eliminating the need for pieces to reach the sides. The second is to accelerate the movement of the pieces by rapidly vibrating the left thumb. 
the big question is whether or not Thor is going to participate. He has claimed to get past the death screen of level 29 into 30, uh, which is very hard to believe once you've seen the speed of 29. He, I believe, has maxed the game out at the age of 14. I uh, never saw it. I don't know if anyone did, but I have no reason not to believe him. He was the greatest Tetris player in the world 20 years ago. He beat over a million kids, um, and he, he beat us handily. Robin Mahara knows Nintendo. He recently returned from the Nintendo World Championships in Universal City, California. The key to success? Hand-eye coordination. Yep, an eagle eye, a finger that flies, and hours and hours of practice. You know, three months of training and hundreds and hundreds of lawns mode, um, all invested into this one contest. Welcome to Universal Studios Hollywood. This is the playing field of the future. The unprecedented 1990 Nintendo World Championships. Nintendo had 12 massive trailer trucks full of equipment, and it was touring around the, the country, taking one winner from each city, and then it was gonna play all of the winners together in Hollywood uh, to crown a champion. But after watching Thor play, uh, he had the ability to vibrate the directional pad so that the piece actually moved faster than the rest of us could move it. It seemed kind of unfair. I ended up playing two of my, my better games and ended up taking third behind Thor, who won it all. I'm going to write, damn you, Thor, or anything? He's the guy that beat me. Yeah, do it totally. Right. Totally damn. That's my quote. The, uh... the day that he won the national championships, I went to his room and talked to him for the first time. And he said that, um, he had gotten to level 30. This is a quote of his. If you get past level 30, it's pretty easy to max it out. And it was the first time I'd ever heard someone say that maxing out Tetris was pretty easy. I think, you know, in, in 1990, I was really obsessed with wanting to win that competition. Wait, wait. Point oh four. Thor won in Houston, which was where I went for the very first time. And I don't know if he had developed the multi-tap technique by then. By the end of the tour, he had done it. He was really moving the pieces left and right faster than everyone. What none of us practiced doing was vibrate our left thumb, and that's what Thor would do. And he could get the piece to move left to right faster than all of us. And if you watch, Thor's got a technique for his 10 second countdown to get the long bar. He's playing all the way up there and he's vibrating it so fast that it, he can get it over this giant stack. And he doesn't even get the long bar. He, he could have demolished the score. This is the seven champs with Howard Phillips, the face of Nintendo in the 90s. There's something about each of us that was a little off. like. I have ADD and a couple of the guys were awkward and uh, none of us were like your everyday guy, which is probably why we were in the house playing Nintendo for 10 hours a day. Thor was kind of the guy where it's like you feared him, but you didn't want to be him. Thor would kind of come up to us as a, sort of like an outcast and he'd walk up and say, my name is Thor, I'm good at games. Uh, then, you know, we'd go to the arcade and, you know, Thor would be there and he'd walk up to us and he'd say, I'm Thor, I'm good at games. You know, is it an OCD thing? You know, it's it's like, you know, some people who are, you know, prodigies sometimes, you know, have, you know, a little bit of a thing to that. Kind of demonized him as a child because he, he squashed my dreams, but uh, now that I'm past that, uh, I just want to know who this guy is. I felt like he was just like me, just a nerd. We hung out, like, in the mid-90s and like played games together. After the Nintendo World Championships, he kind of burnt out on uh, the fame. It was a video someone must have recorded off the TV in the early 90s, and it was um, the Home Shopping Network. The woman was selling uh, micro machines. 32 different tracks to play with. There he is, Thor. He's our Nintendo World Champ, and he is over there having a ball. I'm pleading with him. I'm going to send him a Nintendo to practice if he needs one. But if he can truly get to level 30, that's probably the most uh, difficult achievement in gaming history. And he needs to get that on tape. The specific game that's over, this has to do more with my wife. Uh, the game that's over being the dating game, uh, of which I was never successful anyway. So I guess I never pushed start on that. I didn't really seek a geeky guy but I found out that I really enjoyed the things that he did and one of my lifelong goals was to be able to solve a Rubik's Cube ever since the 80s <laughs> growing up um, and 
Ben taught me and slowly began to fall in love and now we're married. Every any way that you can turn it has a number code or a space or a dash. Five five two five one nine eight two. Sometimes I get Stuck. I learned it uh, for the specific purpose of impressing women. So really? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Really. I think we're all of one accord that we need to save the princess here. At the end of Mario Three, I, I really believe the appropriate way to beat that game or to not beat that game is to have Bowser fall down his hole and then fall right down that hole behind him. Just kill yourself. Well, they've just, they've had such a struggle together and it feels just right for them to go down together. It cheapens the experience to just beat Bowser and listen to a show tune. I like all games to end like Tetris. Just in sadness and walking away. <laughs> I've only just watched her play and been like, can when you we stop playing Tetris? This, yeah. <laughs> when we were talking about this, I was like, have you even played Tetris? And she was like, yes. <laughs> like, hello, I had, and like played listed Tetris. off her the games of her childhood. And... People who know Dana very well are like, they've known about her situation for a long time. They know that she's really good at her situation. Condition. Her <laughs> condition to me kind of is a condition. What would be the best thing if when I max out, if the Nintendo or the TV would just like explode. <laughs> that would be awesome. What will happen if you max it out, Dana? Are you still gonna play Tetris? I as, think so, As yeah. much as you play Tetris now? Um, I mean, I think I'll always play Tetris. Even your controller felt a little worn out to me. Um, yeah. they, get, they tend to get, it's sort of a mushy feeling. They get mushy. Yeah. I mean, that's everyone's favorite part of the Harry previews, is taking apart the controller. And his controller was the most mushy... Well, it's probably because he presses so hard. Yeah. I mean, Doesn't it's he be. loop something? I remember seeing... He, like, plays through his t-shirt, or a t-shirt, like right. this. Uh, I use a shirt on my left hand, because the D-pad just too stiff, I mean, too rough. He loops his Which thumb Which I tried, by the way, after I saw that. Because I was like, what is he doing? And I tried it and was like, I can play like that, I don't need to. Why does he do that? Because it's so his thumb doesn't hurt. Oh. Because he presses so hard. Yeah. All my controls are messed up. Yeah. How much you go, how many you went through? Like three or four? Three or four, yeah, like four maybe. So when he wasn't getting the record, he would he would blame the controller. No, no, and, but then that was I, legit. I know, okay. I know it's legit, but I I. At the time, I was like, this is not legit, all right? You're just blaming the controller. Yeah, never, never words of encouragement. Yeah, it's it was it's always, always it was discouragement. Always like, hey, Harry, <laughs> all the time. You'll never get it. Yeah, that's just... what it. But then to him, that's, but to me, that's that, him trying to encourage me. That, that's, <laughs> but... I felt like that was the motivation. I just remember that one time where he had, uh, I think it was like 979,000, and then he totally choked. He had it. He had it. It was right there, and he choked, and I just laughed at his face. He did, he did say that once, once he gets the record, he will never touch Tetris ever again. He did say that. Did you not say that? Yeah, I did. Yeah. He told all of, his, all of his friends. But then that, am, that was my motivation to like, because <laughs> I wanted to end it, you know? <laughs> I wanted to just be done with it. And... No, no, so for a while, he, he didn't play. Oh, yeah, that's right, that's right. And then and he started playing this internet Tetris. It's not Tetris, not Nintendo Tetris. It was Tetris friends. It was yeah. like some Tetris online. And I, just, I called him out, I was like, what are you doing? I thought you were done with Tetris. This isn't Nintendo Tetris. This is Tetris with friends or something. <laughs> Tetris friends, man. Yeah, okay, okay. Tetris friends. Wow, wow. And then, <laughs> and then slowly it started progressing and then eventually I went started, back. he went back playing Tetris. If I start feeling like physical discomfort from playing Tetris, I usually try to stop. That's probably a good boss. What if your girlfriend yells at you like, Come I to stop dinner. then too. Liar. Unless I'm like, unless I have a really great game going, I stop. We have a different version of that. What's your version? And then you don't stop. Then I just one more game. Keep playing <laughs> until the crack of dawn. One more game.
We're actually a mortgage banker, um, which means that we fund our own loans. My real talent is business card throwing. I have one stuck in the ceiling. I don't know why, but I have these kind of just ritual things I do. And so I just kind of flicked it and stuck one up there. I like to think that Tetris had something to do with that. Jonas always wanted to be some kind of prodigy. I know he always used to scold us. Well, why didn't you get me a piano and make me practice every day? I could have been a prodigy. I, know. I, could, I, know. I could have been a Beethoven. This is you know? factually correct. My mom can't watch me play Tetris. She gets too, she gets too stressed out with, with the, the speed. And if it really gets like close, I, she gets more stressed than I do. Yeah, well, I was worried it's going to bother him and make him mess up, you know. And if he does, I'm like, oh, it's all my fault. I shouldn't yeah. have looked at it. I can't watch. But, you yeah, I, I don't want to be the smother mother, you know, which is <laughs> tempting when you got somebody like Jonas. The reason I think that uh, perfectionists actually don't play the best Tetris is that you have to kind of be sloppy. If, if I was hung up on how nice and pretty the boards looked, I don't think I'd be as good yeah, as I am. That's where you take after your dad, because he was you know, a real messy guy. When it was competitive, he didn't like to watch me. Um, he, he scored pretty well. I think his highest games were about 200,000, and when I was like 10 or 11, I was scoring around then, and then I kind of left him in the dust, unfortunately. And so there was a period where he took that personally. Once it got ridiculous, he started coming back. And, and watching it. And my with my uncle too, uh, both of them, his brother, yeah. liked to watch it quite a bit. He was actually diagnosed uh, with cancer 16 months before he passed. We had a we had a long window to just kind of work things out. And we spent a lot of days just talking, having great, you know, philosophical, deep, uh, wonderful discussions while I was playing Tetris. I, I remember the first time that I watched Jonas play. I came here, it was, uh, we were in high school, and I'm watching, and I was like, dude, Jonas is really good at Tetris. <laughs> and then I just started seeing more and more little moves. If you play enough Tetris, you get to see like that they flipped it right at the very last possible second. The only moment it worked. And I asked him, I was like, how do you, how do, you do it? You know, how is this? Because I can't think of it that fast. And he goes, you have to see the next piece coming. And imagine, like, like when I'm placing this piece, I'm actually thinking about where the next one is already going. The master's primary consideration is the next piece which, along with the piece in play, allows for over 500 possible combinations of moves at any given moment. There are always many bad moves and very few good ones. Limited to a single piece preview, the perfect moves are unknowable. The master has an agile mind, rejects the notion of bad luck, welcomes the piece that does not fit, takes calculated risks, never gambles, remains calm in the face of death. The one trick to training in Tetris is to be always almost dead. If you're almost dead, you're probably training. Robin is about to head south to Los Angeles, where he'll make his final preparations for the tournament. Two years ago, if you brought up the Nintendo World Championships, it was like sort of a novelty piece of trivia about me. If I was in a bar and my friend would be like, you know, this guy is a Nintendo World Champion. The person who he was talking to would always say, oh, is it like the wizard? And I'd be like, yeah, that was actually the wizard was made to sort of promote it. It went from, from just like this funny little tidbit to me finding Nintendo Age. Their editor for their e-zine asked me to write some articles, which I did, and it was really nice to like have you know, a couple thousand people reading my story and it's like I was getting a little touch of fame that I didn't get when it actually happened. Robin stops in Sunnyvale, California to visit one of his old competitive gaming buddies. He hopes to get some help running his Tetris tournament. These are thumbs genetically designed to dominate video games. Yeah. These are massive and they're born to win. Actually, I found a newspaper article of my first game contest, which was 
the Hawaii State Nintendo Championships, and the game was Super Mario Bros. 1. I was the only one who beat the game, 250 something thousand points. I had like four minutes left. I just sit back, relaxed, watched everybody else sweat, dying on World 8-3. But you know, I was a kid at the time and I was just like, wow, I'm actually good at something. You know, all this time I've been spending playing video games, you know, it's not for nothing. You know, I, I, I've proven it. That prepared me for Rock the Rock, which is the biggest game contest, you know, that they had on TV. $25,000 contest. And right now it is the battlefield for all the game busters to get busy on Sonic and Knuckles for the $25,000 Big Daddy Prize. I did this thing where I'd close my eyes and I'd play the game in my mind, and I guess I freaked out a lot of people, which is a good thing. Yes, we got it! The Sega World Champion! You know, this is it. This is really awesome. Um, I'm becoming this larger-than-life video game star, and I'm becoming like Robin Mahara, which was the guy I thought, like, this is the guy I want to be when I grow up. I want to be that cool kid with the hat and the finger, and he's got confidence, and he's, he looks good, he plays good, you know, stone cold, just destroying every everything in his past, and I was finally living up to that example. Hey, man. When you just get to 30, you're gonna have to pass out some depends because we're all gonna be peeing. Don't let that scare you though, please, please do it anyway. I, I know that already people are doubting him because he doesn't have any videotapes. Uh, he really, I sincerely believe he does not want the spotlight ever again because he feels like it kind of was the, uh, I forget how he phrased it, like the cornerstone of a, of a very difficult life. I had always wondered, you know, what would happen if you and Thor went face to face? Yeah. Who, who would uh, who would win, basically? Thor was saying that he wasn't going to compete. Like he was going to come, but he wasn't going to compete. So I found him on Facebook, got into a little bit of why he doesn't want to win again. I think there was a, was a sort of a failed uh, negotiation with Nintendo. He was kind of getting pimped out, like his dad would drive him to trade shows and, and the consumer electronics show. And I don't know if he would speak for money or what he was doing exactly. But um, sounded like Thor didn't get any of it. I don't know. Maybe it's also just annoying to be known as the Tetris champion. Being a, a pretty big student of the game, I'm really excited about meeting all of these people and seeing their different styles and personalities. Most of these people, I'm guessing, just play by themselves in front of a TV and didn't even know that other people were doing the same thing until they found Twin Galaxies. So I, I want to meet them all and learn their tricks and just talk about Tetris. It's, it's gonna be exciting for all of us to be able to talk to somebody who really understands the, the high level of the game. Yeah, right, burn, right, <laughs> straight down, <laughs> right. <laughs> Can read your mind. Totally close my eyes for that one. Can you talk while you're on 19? Oh yeah. I'd love to talk when I'm on 19. <laughs> the stuff that you do is different. It's like it's like you can see. That is so crazy what you just did. That is insane. I'm nuts. You put both of them just wrong and then it was fine. Yeah. Isn't it gorgeous? <laughs> so what are you seeing when you did that? Like you're seeing the level above it. You don't care about Yeah, you kinda just see it's just like in, in chess, seeing a few moves ahead. Yeah. Like you create a hole and it's gone. It's just, a, you can think of it as a combination. I noticed for your record game you're stacking on this side. Yeah. I don't know, for some reason I, I usually score higher, like yeah. on, on average, when I stack to the right. That's it. You're a one-button player. What do you mean? You yeah. only flip one direction. 
I have never played any other way. That is crazy. Like your some of your flips are hit, like right before it lands. I have never even heard of not being a one way flipper. This might be one of those breakthrough moments we spoke of earlier. <laughs> and then these guys came over and they showed me that you could actually flip the pieces in more than one direction. Never thought to even when just try all this these funny. years, I just yeah. thought it did the same thing. Yeah, because most, I think every piece. I was always like, why would you use B when you could use A? Now, I have a hard time setting this up. So this is a T-spin. I rotated it and just went right in there. Dude, you, have never done a T-spin. Never seen that. Not even accidentally. This is pretty big. Like I didn't know about a million things that you just told me. Do you guys think I'm stupid? <laughs> no, not whatsoever. I mean, I spent. This has been like a year of my life figuring this stuff out, and then. Yeah, but this has been like, I've been playing Tetris for like 20 years. I don't even want to know how many hours I've played Tetris. Like that, that would just depress me to know. There's some things that um, I've studied your games or the couple that I've seen and you have a few things that no one else does. Wow. Did you do that all on purpose? Uh, I saw it develop. Nice. The, the L blocks can be flipped all over the place. See little like, little L block flips like that in and around, um, so that right there, hold on. There we go. Ooh, there we damn. Go. <laughs> <laughs> I have never seen anybody do that. But he actually did it clean, like with a purpose. That was awesome. I can stamp it, and I had just gotten Tetris, and I wasn't thinking about playing. I was just kind of playing, you know, nine or 10 years old, whatever. And I put up like 175,000 or whatever. I tripled my highest score. Since then, it was just kind of like a, an epiphany. And ever since then, I've just been kind of trying to relegate the play to the back of the mind. It, I, I play better when I hum a, a song to myself, random daydreaming, you know, while I'm playing. I almost believe that the mind kind of has like a little, uh, like a buffering kind of ram situation. And so if you think about a, a move too much, your next move suffers. Like there's some, there's a, there's a loading screen for the mind. And I've, I've definitely tested mine. Man, the, the heart rate starts increasing. At one point I started getting like tunnel vision. I thought I was like about to pass out. Playing that many hours, you gotta think stuff. You just think random weird things. When I was, when I was little, I just figured there was a little electronic dwarf in, in the system. And they were just, you know, sadistic in the way that they gave me pieces. And that was my first first concept of the Tetris God. So there's, there's a little bit of a give and take war with the game itself. Sometimes you have to concede to it. It is very difficult to fight the game because it will win. Sometimes I really do think as a mind of its own. You have to think four or five steps ahead in one second. When I'm in the zone, it feels like I'm pretty much like one with the game, in sync, just flowing. It's like a constant flow. You're just doing this thing and like things are changing, it's really fluid and it just is always like morphing into a new thing that you're just constantly reacting to. When you're playing Tetris, just put stuff where it fits. It's that simple. The definition of NP-complete is basically that with the input size of the problem, the time required to calculate the answer um, basically increases faster than polynomial time. Um, with a problem like Tetris, it will become longer than we ha like humanly have on this earth to even like calculate the perfect answer. This is um, Tetris Grandmaster. It came out in uh, 1998. I think I first played back when I saw, um, well, it was one of those videos that went around on YouTube. It was, I think, uh, Tetris Japan Finals or something was what it was labeled. It was a death mode video. And I just thought that was really cool. It looked really uh, challenging. It looked really fun. Tetris The Grandmaster 2, a Japanese arcade game, awards Grandmaster status to players who can survive invisible Tetris for at least one minute. In invisible Tetris, the pieces disappear once they land. Alex is one of only 30 Grandmasters in the world.
I got to the invisible credit roll and somehow managed to survive for long enough to actually pull it together and get the grade. You have to learn the game all over at a deeper level in order to succeed, where you have to like really know how is this piece affecting the stack and that you have to keep track of like, how can I keep the, uh, the stack easy to remember? I just hope that I can, you know, play pretty consistently. I don't have like a bad day or something. I don't have many other expectations for myself other than that, just to go and have a good time playing some NES Tetris. Nintendo Tetris allows the player to start on any level up to 19. Starting on 19 is the only way to train to become a master. The basic thing you gotta do when you train is you do level 19 and you try to Tetris constantly. You fail because it's fast. NES Tetris or Nintendo Tetris, the speed plateaus for 10 levels at a speed that seems impossible to most players. One split second of extra thought is equal to your death. At level 19, the game reaches a punishing speed. The pieces begin to fall as though the player were constantly pushing down, taking less than two-thirds of a second to reach the bottom. The Tetris Master can only survive by taking control of the piece during its brief entry delay, the one-sixth of a second between one piece landing and the next appearing at the top. Right when I know the piece is done, and it's the next piece, I'm already pressing the D-pad. So by the time it comes out, it's already, it's already moving in that direction. Once you get past the panic and you realize that you're probably pushing way too hard on the buttons, I try really hard to shift into my peripheral vision. Because if you focus too hard on the actual screen, I find that that flusters me. It really makes a sort of a radical certainty the only way to go. It's better to put a piece in the wrong place than to change your mind and try to put it in the right place. So you have to go with your first instinct and you have to have the software in your brain to make that first place you think of the right place. Uh, the last time I got Tetris Effect was when I was, um, shoot, I was in high school. The Tetris Effect refers to players having dreams or mild hallucinations about the game. I was doing some specialty stacking. Like, there's something that uh, Sega Tetris players used to do. They would draw a pattern in the stack. They would leave holes to make a uh, greater than shape in the stack. And so the last time I got Tetris Effect really bad is when I started doing that, and I did it for like an hour or something the first day. And the next day I was just like, wanted to kill myself because I couldn't stop thinking about making the staircase and like putting all the pieces down because it was something, it was a totally new problem for my brain to consider. When I have a square or rectangle shape or a box of any sort and I need to put things into it, <laughs> it goes back, that's what everybody calls it, they say, Jesse, you're Tetrisizing. I daydream during the day, I'll, I'll sit and play Tetris in my head. I have Tetris dreams at night sometimes, you know, if, I, if I'm playing it right before I go to bed. Uh, there was a, a very interesting study by some guys at Harvard who were studying sleep. And they did have people play Tetris before they went to bed, and sure enough, they often dreamed about Tetris. And the researchers came to the general conclusion from this and other data that one of the purposes of dreaming is memory consolidation of things you've learned during the day. In 1992, Dr. Heyer used brain scans to show that Tetris training can lead to increased brain efficiency. The brains of people struggling to learn the game showed high levels of activity, indicated here on the brain scan in red. But the brains of players who have mastered the game showed very little activity and appear to be at rest. Now, of course, on the second scan, the game is faster, the game is harder, they're processing more. And the question for us was, is the brain more or less active? Virtually everyone assumed the brain had to be more active. We had thought the brain actually might be more efficient as the Tetris program became unconscious and automatic and would require less activity, less energy. And sure enough, that's what we found. That software, so to speak, in your brain can become very powerful. So much as you can get out of its way, you can become when you're playing, when you calm yourself down enough, like a human computer. You would not believe I walk around in this t-shirt all the time. No one gets it. 
No one gets it. My guys, really? To go along with it, my Nintendo pants. We have Mario is my homeboy, classically trained with the original Nintendo controller. So this will be my official competition outfit. Just being at the competition, like I am so stoked about that, that all I want to do is just go play with these guys. You know, these guys that are great. The tournament, as I understand it, basically is uh, three games and you, the highest score gets into the finals. It's really going to come down to who can survive to level 29, because that's going to give you another 200,000 points. So if I just survive to level 29, I will beat most of the people who traditionally are, have lower scores than me. Like players like Jesse and Ben, they will, I, mean, they'll, I know they will play safe already. You might just get a bad set of pieces, you never know, so I think playing a little safe will be the best bet. It's going to kind of be a balance. I'm going to try to, I'm going to try to Tetris, but try to do it in such a way that I don't kill myself. I've kind of designed it to score consistently. I don't want to put down a 400,000. That's, if you see me put it down a 400,000, like hide the sharp objects. I'm hoping on Sunday it'll be over. Like, you know, I, I don't expect anything less than you know, victory, so, yeah, maybe I shouldn't have said that, but okay. Yeah, well, I'll guarantee the finals. So you, you've asked about oh, Jonas, but you haven't asked about Thor. you have any questions from, about from him? From what I heard, I hear he's not playing? Uh, actually, we think he's going to make an appearance. He's definitely... Appearance as in, like, and, and participant, compete. or...? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's showing up tonight. And he's going to be in the tournament? Uh, yes. Sorry, I didn't tell you. No, I last I knew it. I thought he wasn't going to be. I just, I feel almost annoyed that Thor hasn't done anything in the way of proving what he's done. He recently had a Facebook update, just got to a million points and level 30 for the first time in 20 years. He got the cell phone, just take at least a cell phone picture. Something. He finally broke out his Nintendo and he says that, uh, he got to 30, level 30. He, got, he says he that got, he got to 30. That's what he says. Yeah. He says that it, like, killed his thumbs. But it's never been on tape? Yeah, I mean, if no you photos. recorded it and showed you some of it, then... Yeah, because I'm always... I was always, like... Skeptical? Yeah, about the whole past level 30 thing. Right. I can't imagine it. Unless, unless he's, like, you know, a finger-tapping god. But even with that, I don't think he could maneuver that well to get rid of 20-plus pieces in that speed. That's, that, I mean, that's what I think. But, you know what, honestly... What, what, we're like five days away? I mean, I really hope Thor proves me wrong. Robin has just found out that Thor has finally arrived. Okay. They've agreed to meet for the first time in 20 years here at the production's home base in Laguna Beach, California. Where is he? <laughs> 20 years later. Oh yeah, brother. Turned into a man. <laughs> How you doing? Yeah, we both are. Yeah, yeah. It is so great. I mean, you're out of it, right? You don't understand what all these people are like whispering about you. And, you know, the fact that you don't have a take to just. The fewer hates them. They're like, why wouldn't he tape it if he can get the 30s? Uh, yeah, that's kind of what it is. <laughs> do, do you feel any responsibility to, like, people that, like, see this game as a religion? to like just show what is possible. I had a, a massive accident in 96. You know, they took a big chunk of my skull because uh, it was all rammed into my brain and uh, I was in a coma for a while. And, Do you think that affected your game at all? Oh uh, yeah, it affected everything. Sometimes, you know, things are just blank in my head. It's an honor to be able to actually meet some of them popping up here today, like Thor Arkeland and Ben Mullen. People I've just heard the names of, read the legends of, seen random forum posts from, and now seeing them live to life, it's wow. Like a mortal walking amongst gods. I don't know what to do with myself. They're in snap pictures and humbly stay away unless they beckon me in. With Kelly handy, Robin decides to attempt a world record on Tengen Tetris. Ben Mullen currently holds the world record with a score of 1.89 million. A record on Tengen Tetris is known as a marathon because the difficulty plateaus at a sustainable level. Robin has been playing for about one hour. 
He's already flipped the score once, so he's at 1.4. Oh, okay. 1.84. Here, well, oh, wait, wait, wait. Oh, wait. Eight, five, eight. oh. Here we go. There it is. <laughs> yeah! Oh. Having been reluctant to play any Tetris since arriving, Thor suddenly decides to break both records. We gotta get Kelly, uh, Thor's about to break the world record now. Um, how many times have you flipped it? Just once. It takes a long time to flip it just once. Thor, so thank you for allowing my record to stand for three hours. <laughs> What is, I don't even know what my record is. 11... 1238. I'll never get there. Let so. me tell you the story of the signing of the Treaty of Versailles. <laughs> it all began with World War I. Thor has been playing for over two hours. He has smashed both world records. Suicide! Congratulations. Good hey, work, Thor. Good game, Thor. Good done. Broke both records. So, Thor, you just broke the Tengen record. Was that something you saw yourself trying before you got here? <laughs> no, it just looked like fun. Was it a game that you'd ever played before? Yeah, it was actually the one that I could rent, so I practiced that. Uh, so I didn't have a Nintendo, my friend Aaron did. I, I was out of school by then. Um, my last school was in fifth grade, so I would hang out with him. He was like one of the only people I knew in the neighborhood. And he had a Nintendo Power thing, and it was talking about NWC. His parents took him down there and he took me with him. It was fun because socially I, I didn't really have much exposure or anything because I was either at home or I had like two friends, you know. And, um, so my, my house had burned down in, in 89 and my mom was in the hospital for a long time. She had an attack of something called ventricular fibrillation. It's a kind of a, a tachycardia attack where your heart tries to pump too fast from the signals. She had a lot of facial paralysis, like a stroke victim. So that was pretty hard, honestly. Because my dad uh, wasn't really having any income, and my mom was unable to work, and um, just being able to get the, the prizes was helpful. We've got some big winnings tonight. $10,000 US City Bond, a large screen Panasonic TV, a pair of Reeboks, you can keep those. And a brand new Geo LSI convertible. Like, I wanted to get the car to my brother, but we had to sell it. Um, and they had cash the savings bond in and all this other stuff. So it was more like a relief than anything else. It's been a long trip. I'm glad I can still look back. Glad one too. I didn't really have anything left over from the fire, but I did have a little metal box that survived, and what was in it but micro machines. And then in a couple of years, I would be endorsing the video game. Micro machines for Nintendo is one of the best and most innovative racing games ever. From there, I had a short career endorsing things and. And my family had a lot of financial difficulties, and uh, for a while, this is, this is interesting, but my income from uh, the NWC and the endorsements for several years was the only income my family had. You know, we basically became pretty much almost homeless. It left me with a really bitter um, feeling. I think you could you could make a lot of parallels with uh, life philosophy that way because life isn't fair, and all Tetris sure isn't fair. <laughs> you got to deal with what they give you, and uh, sometimes they give you some really uh, hard to swallow garbage. But you know, if you can chug through it, that that makes you a winner. Say, where are you? Robin was worried you might have chickened out because you were afraid of me, but... Oh, uh, I didn't get your name, that's why. Oh, it's fine to meet you. Alex Jonas. That's Pleasure, man. What's up? Hello. Yeah. Good to meet you. You too, man. Dallas. There. We hung out at a mall and played Mortal Kombat for a couple hours. <laughs> I can't really imagine a person oh, yeah. uh, too much better than Dallas. Yeah. I've been watching movies. Just about as good as we can I'm hurting right now. It's okay. It's because Jonas scored that high, that's why. <laughs> it bothers me. You know, the Tetris players that are here right now are going to shatter any possible idea of what people thought could be 
obtained in Tetris. I used to play the original arcade version, and I used to bet money with the guys in my high school. Whoever could hold the reins, you know, King of the Hill in the arcade the longest was sort of, you know, the unspoken god of Tetris. And, you know, I, I was that guy. And to come here and see these guys just wax the floor with me, sort of like a le level of inhuman. It's moving faster than onlookers can actually perceive the game. These guys are thinking it. You know, they're thinking pieces ahead and making sure that the platform is ready for the next piece. You know, it's, it's really something to watch. I think anyone can appreciate Tetris at that level. The Tetris community is a phenomenal community and it just needs to be exposed to the world. World to see, yeah, it's not just a game, it's a history. It's an evolution. You kind of like shake the whole controller with you. It's not just your thumb. Yeah, it's kind of like a drum. It's like your whole thing. high school drum major. Exactly, exactly, exactly. Because you had been to level 30. Which I haven't even flirted with, I think. Yeah, I think all of us, that's kind of the white elephant in the room, is that we want to see it. Well, I'll give it my best. It, it, it's something that I probably won't see, but I will watch in like reverence. I was watching earlier. I think that you could definitely do it almost immediately if you do it center well. The center well? Yeah. Let's call. One down, one up. Two over. Survey says six outs. Stick a white in there, Kevin. If you want to stay. All of a sudden, I'm just looking and like, wow, I'm up against Rob and he's destroying everyone. He's wanting to push it all in hard. <sighs> you only live once. I pushed and figured, why not? Terry Coke. trips. <laughs> so do I. King High. Ah! Oh, me! Boom! That's why you are my house, yeah. bitch! Yeah! Terry <laughs> I couldn't have contained my excitement. It was an absolutely incredible moment. Kind of felt like some basketball player that goes up, there's a hoop, boom, dunks on Shaquille O'Neal. Take that, that's right, it's my home now. Somebody's gonna like, oh, like a Tonya Harding, like, break everybody's thumbs. And they're like the only one left. If anyone was done, yeah, it's gonna be Ben. Yeah, I've already actually broken Harry's in some way to the uh, doctor right now. So you don't do you don't do the two buttons yet. Well, I That's, do now. I think Harry's 808 video online doesn't use yeah, both buttons. He yeah, he and I talked about. He actually noticed that uh, Harry builds on the left side, which is interesting. I find it. I feel the right side. I find that to be. You mean unacceptable. you leave your you leave your. I mean it works for him, yeah, but I just I would not right. do that. Who said it was unacceptable to? Did you say that? Was you? <laughs> it was you. Mostly for my level 19 plus game. No, I know that you... I, I switch, switch back, yeah. Switch. The reason why I did to the left, the gap on the left, is I score higher when I go to the left. You, you... I, I, yeah, I've done it. Because back in the day, I used to play like hours and hours and hours. Wow. Leaving the gap. Yeah. Good luck tomorrow, man. Good luck. <laughs> you're awesome. I you're really awesome. appreciate that. <laughs> you're awesome too, you know that? Why, thank you. There are eight spots in the semifinals. Five are reserved for players who hold previous world records. Those players are Jonas, Harry, Jesse, Ben, and Thor. The remaining three spots are open to the public. The preliminary round is unlimited attempts at highest score on Type B Tetris with a 25 line limit. Seven Tetrises are possible within the 25 lines. Dana, Alex, and Trey almost qualify to reach the semis. They'll have from noon until 2 p.m. to post a high score. She doesn't even like me. She doesn't want me to it's win. It's gotta be skill. This but I expect to win on skill, not on luck. Yeah. Uh, this is my mother. Yes. Doris. Hello. She's, she's the best mom a Tetris player could have. I'm about nervous enough to throw up because everyone I know is expecting me to win. There's sometimes when you're just in a zone, you know where to put every piece. You know what that's going to leave you with. Anyway, I came out here uh, from New York. I was just hoping to make it to the semi round, maybe be like the underdog or something. Yeah, no long guys. I think the highest you can get is seven Tetrises, and, and at that point, you've hit the sort of the 25 line limit, and the game ends. But I think it'd be cool to, to play in the, in the semi finals, although I know that I'll just get destroyed there. <laughs>
No, I think I'm number two now. But uh, not for Alex, long. Did Alex do it? Ah, all right. So no one's done it. No one's done the perfect one. No, not yet. Door's still open. Eventually, I think people are going to get perfect ones. I think yeah, the highest right now is 147. So it's going to get... And then it comes down to the, the pushing it down. Then it comes down to the push down. One six seven seven five nine. How did it feel? Good. <laughs> After all those really bad games, I just got one where everything was clean. I didn't push it too hard, and I just like went for the Tetrises, and they all just came together. So that was good. There was a move at the end where I saw I had to make a, make a hole, but I saw it was above the uh, fourth row. It was the sixth row, and it was my last Tetris. So I was like, thank goodness, because I could like you know make that hole, not worry about it, complete the rows that I needed to go for the Tetris, and I just like went for it. Just a few minutes ago, I finally got it, got the seven in a row, so I should be able to make it through with that. There's about four or five people who could probably match that, and then it's all about how many times you push down to get a few extra points. I don't think it's going to be like where two or three people are just going to like come in and like get perfect games and like push me out. I think I have a spot. Yeah, I'm going to switch to that. Yes. What? How are you feeling, Trey? Uh, well, my heart's pounding now, but during the game, I was just like, you know, either I'll get the pieces or I won't get the pieces. Figured if I just keep playing, eventually I'll get seven in a row. So. Uh, Trey's now in first with 167, 911, making it all level 18, seven Tetrises, uh, and pretty much pushing down on the D-pad to get extra points is, is separating the top three scores at this point. Dana's still in there. I'm not doing as well as I can do, so it's a little bit disappointing, but hopefully I can, you know, pull it together. She's usually really even keeled for the most part, and so um, it kind of surprises me that she's having such a hard time right now. Dana is one of the most kick-ass people I know. She is a, a gamer at heart. She and Brooke are just like meant for each other. I don't know, I think I think, I think girls in gaming is, adds a really, really valuable perspective for, you know, male-dominated nerd fest, you know? I think that she's under the most pressure of anybody here because the cameras are following her, she keeps getting interviewed by newspapers, and I kind of feel bad for her because it's like a lot of added pressure that um, it's obviously affecting her. God, it's giving me heart palpitations just to watch this. Dana is forced to burn off her last line just as she receives the necessary long bar. Fuck me! Oh. Like, it would have been better if it didn't even... Yeah, if it didn't show. Yeah, if it didn't even show. <laughs> it's really close to seven twice. I can get seven. just edged out her friend Alex uh, for the last spot. Oh, I think I'm in fourth right now. It might just be that I got knocked out. He's so cute. He's the little baby grandmaster. Hey guys. Hey, congratulations. I'm a little more worried about this. Thank you, Alex. Well, we got our top, top three. It's official. And we have our top eight for the finals.
so uh, when I first met Alexi in 1989, it was February of 1989, he said, said to me, Hank, you know, you're going to go back and you're going to make this game. And uh, I really want to find out uh, who's the best player in the world. And, uh, you know, we really haven't found out in all these years. And a very interesting thing about all this is that, well, Robin's the guy who's been putting this tournament together, and we really need to give him a hand in making the Tetris World Championships possible. It comes from his passion and from, from his life experiences, how Tetris and the Nintendo World Championships changed his life, uh, that now we're having this wonderful Tetris Classic World Championship. All right, it is now time for our semifinals. Eight players will compete in three rounds. Round one will be an attempt for the most lines, and round two and three will be attempts for the most points. And the top two players will advance to our Tetris finals. All right, let's start in 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Let's play some Tetris. All right, we start off here. Harry's gets a triple line score followed by another, I believe. Looks like Jesse, Jesse is, is out. out. 52,541. Thor is setting up. He's got his well set. Just needs a long block. And wow, we, we switched to Thor. The audience is shocked by Thor's early top out. He'll have to dominate the score rounds to have any chance to make the finals. Now remember at level 29, the speed increases again, believe it or not. What's known as the kill screen. We're getting close to that kill level. screen here at level 28. 290, there it is. Look at that speed. Harry at 290. Harry is out. 290 for Harry. That's the leader right now. Joe is at 281. Can he hit 290? Dana was out. I don't know where Dana was out, but Dana's out. 61, let's go back to the other screen. I'll just switch the video back to, there we go. All right. Jonas, 29. Well, 294. 294 for Jonas. That's our leader. 294. Jonas scores 294 lines, the second most in recorded history. Ben at two, two players left, Ben at 280, but this is a good score as well. He'll be in the top, looks like three for sure. Oh. Single line, Ben, oh, here we go. Ben, 290 as well, great job, guys. Jonas, Ben, and Harry all succeed at reaching the level 29 kill screen. Matt and Dana post decent scores while the rest lag behind. Second looks like tied for second is Harry and Ben. Three, two, one. Let's play some Go. Tetris. Now we will be looking for lots of Tetrises here. Dana gets, Dana's trying to work out. She's working. She's doing good to survive there. Awesome burning, Dana. She's back there. She burned it off. She's waiting for the one. There it is. Tetris. That's good for a Tetris. And triple one score for Thor lead. right there. 134 for Jonas, 122, Harry, Thor, 99,000. Ben setting up for a Tetris. Tetris. Jonas Tetris for Harry. Harry as well. And Thor oh. with the Tetris. Thor burns a double line right there. He's waiting for a long piece. Here it comes, Tetris, 207 for Thor. Come on, Jonas. Tetris Harry. for Harry. 343 for Harry, wow. The leader looks like to be, Jonas looks like to be the leader on this one. Oh, ben is, the ben is out with 249-919. Thor with a Tetris. Dana needs a long piece. Dana gets it. Triple line score for Dana. Dana in trouble. She slides it out. Dana's out. Dana with 363, 824. Double line for Jonas. Harry's at 19. The end is near. But he's going to come away with one. Harry with 451, 
6.15, that's the current leader, but not for long. Level 19. 3.48 for Thor, he just slides a long block. Oh. Jonas is out. 453,000. 378. Jonas is down top four. We're down to just two players, Matt and Thor. Matt, stay alive here. Vibrating thumbs are the only thing that can keep you alive here. And Thor is out. 469,000, four by four. Thor narrowly wins round two, but it's not quite enough to put him back in the race for the finals. You did a lot better this round. You went from next to last to first, I believe. Surrounded by greatness. Greatness makes you great. 451, not bad. You were the leader for a while. I'll do better. <laughs> He'll do better. Jonas, 453. Now you could have done a little bit better? Uh, I feel inside that I have the Tetris monster within me. And, and I, Unleash it! Unleash that monster, Jonas! I, I'm just going to let it out next game. I'm just going to open the cage door and see what happens. The leaders right now, wow, it's close. In first is Jonas Neubauer with 196.6 points. The top five scores are close. A weak game from Harry or Jonas in round three could give Dana or Matt a chance to make the finals. It would take a near max out score for Ben or Thor to sneak in. Three, two, one. Tetris time. Oh. Again, points matter. So we'll be lo looking for lots of strategies trying to get just Tetrises. Ben, ben burns off a double and falls off the Tetris. Beautiful. And another Tetris for Ben. 221. Matt and Dana are keeping a good pace to challenge Harry and Jonas. Dana is living a little dangerously now. Another test for Dana, 191. But midway through round three, Harry and Jonas are showing no signs of letting up. For another test, here comes for Ben. Ben reaches 300,000, he's 313,000, I believe that's the lead. Ben is on pace for a max out. A score in that range would be his only chance to make the finals. And Ben about to do it. And another catcher, 345. 345 for Ben. Jonas, 302. Thor, 229. Harry, 283. Remember, this speed will stay about consistent until it hits level 19 where the speed then jumps up. Thor is waiting for a long block, as is Jonas, as is Ben. Thor knocks down another one. Ben's in a one. Ben burns off a triple line score. That was key. Oh, oh man. Ben's in a little bit of trouble. Oh, man. Oh. Ben is out. Ben, ben, out. ben succumbs to a 36-piece long bar drought. Jonas is now our current leader. Dana at 314. Harry at 495. 431 for Jonas. Dana is out. 484,073 for Dana. Jonas setting up for attendance on the right side. Jonas slips on it. He gets it back a little bit. Jonas is out. Jonas, 550,841. Jonas tops out with a 550,000, leaving the door open for Matt and Thor. Oh, Matt's in a little bit of trouble here. It's back a single. Trey with the single. Matt is out. Good job, Matt. Matt with 454,781. Thor is out. Thor with 506 and 84 points. 506,084. Harry's gunning to take the lead from Jonas. He's doing a great job of keeping it low and burning it off. Oh, he's almost at the death speed here. He's almost at level 29. Harry finishes off round three by achieving the top score of the day of 583,000 points. I just felt so great in that third game and just tanked right there. On level 13, I think, or something. What did you do, 13? Yeah. Oh, I know how you feel right now. You can do it. You can do it. Hopefully. I don't care. Jones is tough. Jones is tough, so. Oh, I know. 
see what happens with that. Finals are a best two out of three head to head match for the highest score. Harry and Jonas made it here by playing consistent, mistake free Tetris in the semi finals. Harry executes a death-defying vertical long bar slide, but it turns out not to be enough to save him. Harry has his first bad game of the night with a paltry 302,000 points. Jonas wins round one, making round two a must-win situation for Harry. Harry has taken control of round two with a 50,000 point lead. Harry tops out with a score of 517,000. It's Jonas's game to lose now. Jonas prevails surpassing Harry's score of 517,000 with a Tetris on level 23. I'm a little disappointed that uh, Thor wasn't able to really show what he's capable of, but just had an off day. It was fantastic being up there. It was nerve-wracking, and it was very loud, and it was very hot. Uh, it was an amazing experience. Um, of course, I wanted to win, but you know, Jonas, you know, he's, he's phenomenal, so hopefully I'll try again next year. I really wish I had won today. <laughs> so. It's Tetris, man. Yeah. Nothing can happen. It turns out it's pretty random. Yeah. <laughs> Who knew? Yeah. Tetris of all things is rad. <laughs> I kind I kind of rolled the dice a little bit and, and tried to set up the set up the Tetris for the win, and I'm and I'm glad that that kind of I'm glad that that played out. 
<laughs> that was that ballsy. Is. <laughs> I, I, I saw you do that, and that was ballsy. I would not have done it. I'm just saying that Thor Ackerman, of all people, to die at. I don't know how many lines he died at, but it, that's odd to me. I think he wanted to be able to do well in score without having to be afraid of winning because he didn't want to win. Yeah. He really has seemed like he doesn't want to win this tournament. The next day, Thor attempted to reach level 30 for the cameras. His thumbs could not vibrate as quickly as they had in his world championship days. After dozens of attempts, he gave up. That first round when I totally glitched on the Lions game, uh, I, I was having trouble with my controller, which that wasn't why I stacked up. I, I stacked up because I was taking too many risks, but the controller was distracting me. And I mentioned this to, uh, to Harry after he was done with his game, and he had brought his own controller, but he still had his original that was there provided for his station. And he's like, here, to use this one. You know, and I plugged it in, and sure enough, it worked great. And that's the very next round I got the top score. So, you know, he was really classy and friendly. When I watched Jonas, I was really worried because I kept pulling for the person I was watching. I was going back and forth, you know, just stressing out on the edge of my seat watching the finals. Uh, like at one point, Jonas had this crazy, uh, you know, like double well, crazy canyon looking thing with all these weird gaps. And I was like about to pull my hair out. I was like, oh no, I could see it on the way I was looking. I was like, you need like these seven or eight pieces to come in a sequence to make this work. And NES Tetris is infamously malicious, but uh, those pieces that he needed all came in a sequence and it locked them all together. It's one thing for the pieces to come, but only a very select few people in the world could take those pieces and put them where they need to go, all on a line at high speed. So it was really impressive. It's just been an absolute honor and blast to meet all of y'all and be involved in this. And it's gonna be a memory that I'll cherish, you know, for decades. <laughs> Upon returning to Texas, Thor vowed to officially break or match all records on Ineos Tetris in a year's time. Thor starts on level 19. Jonas is the only person known to have maxed out starting on this level. Thor's renewed ability to vibrate his left thumb is evidenced in the rapid side-to-side -side movement of the pieces. on pace to max out. Thor prepares a center well in an attempt to survive the level 29 kill screen. Thor reaches every milestone achievement in NES Tetris. Max out starting on level 19, level 30. All in the same game. <laughs>